proposed ordinance came to us in response to these impromptu, spontaneous demonstrations, parades, whatever you may call them, that occurred several years ago and, and occurred multiple times. Before I go on, I must say that the committee that worked on this and the legal staff that worked on this do need to be commended. This is a very thorny issue, very difficult. They toiled through many other side issues, many lengthy and probably somewhat boring and protracted meetings and reams of legal research. The problem, though, is that the ordinance doesn't regulate, I think, the very issue that brought this before us. It does not regulate parades resulting, excuse me, it does not regulate parades unless they result from some type of prior planning. It even goes beyond parades to public assemblies that result from prior planning, which is not an issue, I think, that brought this issue before us. It affects much more than what brought this issue before us without addressing the initial problem. I think to sit on this dais as a council person and to assure those members of the public that spoke here tonight in favor of this ordinance that this ordinance will address, regulate, limit, or impact the concerns that brought this ordinance before us that they raised tonight, for me it would be misleading because it doesn't address those. In prior committee meetings, our deputy chief, our corporation council, has stated that the impromptu parades, those that lack prior planning, would not be covered by this ordinance. They're expressly exempt. And they must be. You can't regulate something that someone is not engaging in prior planning in order to come up with a plan to present to the city. With regard to the fines, the city's attorney stated at previous committee meetings that the fines could not be imposed on just anyone who participated, but that it would have to be somebody who knew that the event required a permit, and secondly, participated knowing that no permit was obtained, which is very difficult for those who sort of spill onto the streets and join a march. In fact, it would probably be the organizing committee only that could be fined. And with regard to the amount of the fines, you know, the city is limited by the state. If we wanted to impose fines of $1,000 or $2,000 to stop certain conduct, we're very limited. There's state statute which limits city imposed fines to approximately $100 for general safety, health, and welfare. We'd have to change state law. We've tried in the past, and the mayor has tried in the past, and those have been blocked at the state level. The main problem impacting our residents is not with 25 people as this ordinance would cover, or 50 people, or 75, but with hundreds of people blocking our roads, blocking our sidewalks, blocking intersections, blocking driveways, which the deputy chief in the past, I think the police chief stated here tonight, is currently a violation of our existing traffic laws, both at the state level and the local level, as well as a bunch of other health, safety, and welfare laws that we have on the books. While even some prompt parades may have, as we discussed at our committee meeting, some prior planning, some discussion, if the issue came up as if we're watching a game, and it's a, uh, a playoff game, and there's a bunch of people saying, hey, if the Sox win, we're going to go run down Main Street. And we're going to beep our horns. Maybe not the Sox. Yeah. Well, some, well, based on this season so far. But, <laughs> okay. I was born in Boston. Right. Oh. That being said, but simply as a minor discussion is not prior planning under state case law. Prior planning to sort of incur the imposition of the regulation of government requires a substantial step to the execution of what you plan to do. So talking at a bar about getting together after the game would not make a prior planning which was subject to the ordinance, unfortunately. So it wouldn't cover that conduct. Beyond that, though, this ordinance will impose restrictions, I think, on those who obey the law currently, while expressly exempting, as it must under the law, those who break our laws, who break our social compact of common decency to their neighbors, and should be fined, punished, and prosecuted under existing laws. I also think the ordinance goes far beyond regulating parades. For those who may not know, it regulates public assemblies, not just on streets and sidewalks, but in public parks and other places of, of, uh, that are owned by the city of Danbury, possibly the state, which would possibly be exempted. 25 people or more gathering in a public place doesn't seem to be the problem. It seems to be many more people gathering on our streets and sidewalks. So with that, what I would offer is the following amendment to allow this ordinance to still afford the city notice of parades, to allow this, the chief of police to uh, have at least some level of oversight with regard to permitting, but not to go beyond that which seems reasonable. The amendment would be as follows, to amend 
Section 1115A to increase the number from 25 people to more than 100 people. To remove subsection D, public assembly. And to limit the restrictions or the regulations to those events that would block sidewalks and streets as opposed to the broader definition covering places, public areas, excuse me. Second. Motion to be and seconded by Councilman Perkins. Uh, we are now on amendment to the uh, ordinance as proposed. Um, so any debate would have to relate to the amendment. Um, any, any amending of this particular ordinance would require back to public hearing and, and back to the process again. I just want to make clear that the council is going to process. Having said that, any discussion related to the amendment? Mrs. Theresinos had her hand up, so Councilman Gomez. Thank you. Um, it's, no, it's no secret to anybody here of my passion for this particular ordinance and being one of those people that worked on the committee. Um, I think that Mr. Saudi's amendment has some merit, uh, but I hate to see us amending this ordinance on the fly like this. Um, so I would like to make a recommendation that we review the ordinance to committee and discuss these things. And I'd also like to invite all the people that came here tonight to talk for the first time on this ordinance and bring up issues that we were not aware of, perhaps, or nobody mentioned in the months and months and months that we had committee meetings. Would you please come and participate and make your ideas known while we're working instead of after our work is done? Uh, we currently have uh, an amendment on for a motion to recommit that supersedes the, 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 the amendment. Uh, a motion to recommit will, for um, the council's information, refer this back to an ad hoc, back to a public hearing. I don't believe, is there debate, Mr. Gottschalk, on a motion to recommit? There, there certainly is debatable. Uh, we need a second right now. Second. Second. And second by Mr. Rattel. Um, so the motion would be to refer it back to an ad hoc, uh, which would not have any changes made, would then have to go back to public hearing, and we'll see you in about three years. <laughs> Having said that, is there any debate on this particular issue? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we, are in, we are on the motion to recommit. I'm sorry? We are on the motion to, to recommit to send this back to committee. I withdraw. Did you see that? Thank you, Your Honor. Just as a point of order for clarification, uh, in order to recommend, is that a single majority? Thank you. Say again, Mr. Seward. Gosh, for answering me. Uh, the question was, uh, in order for this to be recommitted to committee and public hearing and all that, does it have to be a simple majority to do so? Uh, would it be, yes, the vote would be a simple majority. Thank you. Uh, any further discussion on the motion to recommit? Having said that, I'm going to ask the, seeing none then, I'll ask the clerk to uh, please call the roll. I'm asking for a roll call vote. Motion to be the yes a yes vote would send us back to committee, back to another public hearing, and a no vote would be to uh, continue on with the debate and discussion tonight. McMahon. No. Negachev. No. Johnson. No. Trombetta. No, thank you. Galatrino. No. Perkins. Yes. Genies? Yes. Esposito? Yes. Sadi? Yes. Cabo? No. Vasso? No. Botello? Yes. Diggs? Yes. Teicholz? No. Riley? Yes. Saracino? Yes. Seabury? No. <coughs> Stanley? Yes. Tabersack? Yes.
Council, uh, uh, back to order, please. Based on the uh, discussion tonight and based on uh, the fact that uh, we have beat this ordinance to death over the last 10 months, I think it's time we act tonight. Uh, I'm going to exercise my, vote to, my right to vote here, which means that there will be a 10 10 tie, which kills the motion to recommit. We'll have further discussion on the amendments as we go. Point of order. I challenge the chair. Motion is made to challenge the ruling of the chair. Uh, is there a second to challenge the ruling of the chair? Okay. Well, first, let me just rule that uh, Mr. Sadi is out of order. He's challenged that. Seconded by Mr. Cianisi. Uh, any discussion on the, the ruling of the chair? No discussion. Mr. Gotcha, did you want to clarify the. No, okay. The chair may vote to make or break a tie when it affects the result. In this case, the vote stands prior to the mayor's vote at 10 to 9 in favor. If he, 10 to 9 in favor. If he votes in the negative, so so without his vote, it's 10 to 9 and it passes. With his vote, if he chooses to vote no, and it becomes 10 to 10, the motion fails. So he makes the time. So Mr. Sadi has challenged the ruling of Mr. Gottschalk on this. Uh, with that, we'll... Uh, uh, with that explanation to the council, I accept Corporation Council's ruling. I withdraw my objection or challenge to the chair. Motion's been made. Uh, withdrawn. A uh, vote, 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 vote would be to support the amendment. A yes vote would be to support the amendment. This is the job. We